In this video, I'm going to talk about scanf and C. So scanf is a function that can be used to accept input from the user by having them say type in characters into a terminal. Now scanf is technically reading from what's called standard input, which is typically the terminal, but we could actually make it something else like a file, just so you're aware of that. So let's actually do an example of scanf here. I'm going to say here printf and I'm going to ask the user to enter a number. So I'm going to say enter a number semicolon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that number into a variable n. So I'm going to say int n is equal to zero. And then here I'm going to use scanf to store the variable into n. So I'm going to call scanf. My first argument to scanf is this string here with a percent %d in it, a placeholder percent %d. And what this is telling scanf is expect an integer. So this first argument here is a string basically telling scanf what to expect. And we're saying expect an integer. So because we've said expect an integer, we have to have another argument here, which is telling scanf where to store the value that is entered for that integer. So here I'm going to say and n. And what this means is store that integer that the user enters into the variable n. Now, technically speaking, this and operator has to do with what's called pointers. Technically speaking, what it's doing is it's actually going to get us the memory address of n. And it's telling scanf, here is an, here's the place in memory where I want you to store the value that is entered. That's why the, the and needs to be there. If we don't have that there, it's actually not going to work. So we do need to remember to put the and there for variables like int and car and double and float. So once we read in the number, let's output it back to the user. We'll say n percent d slash n and then we'll we'll output n so let's give this a run here and we'll just compile it first so we enter a number in we can say like 45 and we get 45 back we could put it we can run it again we could put it in like negative 101 we get back negative 101 so we're reading in a number now an integer and we're storing it into n and then we're able to print it out so we could use this number in our program for example so that's reading in an integer. We can read it in all kinds of stuff. So we can read it in characters, floats, doubles. So let's do examples of those too. I'm just going to say car n, and I'll say car n is maybe equal to a or something like that. And I'll say like enter a character here. And now to read in a character here, I'm going to say percent %c. So percent %c is for characters. And then when I do the output here, I'm going to say percent %c because I want to output the actual character value as well. But other than that, though, it's it's basically the same kind of structure. It's the same idea. It's just percent %c is the placeholder we're going to use now instead of percent %d because we have a character. So let's give this a run and, and see how she goes. Enter a character. I'm going to say capital Y. Enter a character. I'm going to say like lowercase p. We get back p. And so that's how to read in a character. If we want to read in a float, it's very similar. I could say here float. And I could say float n is equal to 0. And I'll say enter a float now. And then here I'm going to say percent %f. So percent %f is the placeholder we need to use if we're going to read in a float. And so now it'll say enter float. I'm just going to say clear here. And we'll do a recompile. And then we'll run this. So it says enter a float. I'll say like 6 or 5.1, negative 9.8. And, oops, I forgot to actually run the program. That would help. <laughs> negative 9.8. We get back negative 9.8. So that's reading in a float. If we want to read in a double, so if I want to say like double n, and I want to say enter a double, then the placeholder we want to use in that case is percent %lf. We want to use percent %lf. With the printf, though, for outputting a float, we can actually just say percent %f. So they're a little bit different in that regard. So if we want to scan in a double, we're going to use percent %lf. If we want to print it out, we can just use percent %f. So we'll give this a try now. And then it says enter double. So I'm going to say here like 9.8, enter double, you know, uh, negative 2.3, and there's negative 2.3 output. So that's characters, integers, doubles, and floats, which are some of the standard uh, types we've got in C. There are others as well, of course, and I'm actually just going to leave a link in the comments for that one, just because if, if we really want to get into it, it's kind of like going through a dictionary at a certain point where there's all these different types and, you know, they're, they're all variation on this, and I've kind of shown you all the big ones already. So one thing you can do with scanf is you can actually read in multiple numbers. So I could say this, I could say like int n1 n2, n3. And I could say here, 
n1 is equal to n2 is equal to n3 is equal to zero, just to initialize them. And then I'm gonna say printf, and I'm gonna say enter n1, n2, n3. Or maybe I'll actually take out the, the commas there, but I'm gonna say enter n1, n2, n3. Now I'm gonna do scanf, and I'm gonna say percent %d, percent %d, percent %d. And I'm gonna say here, and n1, and n2, and n3. And then what I'll do is, I'll, maybe I'll add them together. So I'll say like print F and I'll say sum percent D and I'll do N1 plus N2 plus N3 there. So we'll just produce the sum of these numbers. So I can actually use scanf to read in three numbers like this and it'll actually work okay. So we can give this a shot here. I can run this here and I can put in five, 10, five. We get sum of 20. I can put in like 20, negative 20, and 25, we get sum of 25. So we can actually use scanf like this to read in multiple numbers or multiple things. So one more thing I should show you is strings. So with strings in C, we can define them like this. We can say like car and we could say like str is equal to, and we'll just say like, this is my string. And you know, we can print out strings with percent %s. So we could say like, str percent s and we could output the string and we can work with strings in c like this which are these these lists of characters oh i gotta say percent s here not percent d percent s so we can work with strings like this in c and what they what they really are is they are an array of characters it is possible to use scanf to to store a string in c to accept the string input in c so if I say here car and I'll say like buffer and I'll say 50, what I have here is I have a character array that can hold up to 50 characters and scanf can be used to accept a string from the user. So I could say scanf and I could say percent %s and here I'm just going to say buffer and I'll ask the user for the string. So I'll say printf and I'll say enter a string. Now, a couple things here. You notice that here, we don't have the and. There is no and operator. That's something that, again, I'm gonna have to explain in another video when we talk about pointers. But for now, when you're working with an array like this, you don't need the and operator there. And the sort of short version as to why is that buffer, technically speaking, already is a memory address. It's an array, and when we access it like this, we're accessing, when we access it like this, if I say like buffer one, we're accessing the elements of the array. But when we just use the name buffer, if I just say buffer somewhere like this, technically speaking, it actually is a memory address. It's technically the memory address where this array is stored. So that's why we don't need the and in this case, because it already is a memory address. Scanf already knows based on this, that like this is where you want me to store things. So we'll try to enter a string and then we're gonna to try to print it out. So we'll say print F and we'll say string entered and we'll say percent S slash N and we'll output the buffer. Okay, so let's give this a shot. So it says enter a string and I'll say like Kevin. So string entered Kevin, great. Enter a string, I'll say maybe Canada. String entered Canada. What if I do this though? enter a string and I'll say Kevin lives in Canada string entered Kevin what's going on there so this is why scanf as much as it's very often the first function to be taught for standard input from the user for just accepting input from the user it's oftentimes not the best one to use in a lot of functioning real world C programs scanf actually isn't used there's actually other functions, there's other techniques we can use to accept input from the user that don't have some of the quirks like this that scanf has. To explain this would be a little bit much for this video, but essentially what's happening here is that when scanf encounters a white space, like a space or a new line or a tab, it actually is going to stop at that point and store the string into this buffer here. Now there's other functions we could use that would get around this and it would store a string like this with spaces, but that's for another video. But just be aware that scanf has actually a number of quirks like this. Like for example, it doesn't really do a good job of say, what's called input validation. So if I tell scanf that I want to 
accept an integer and I type in a string instead, or say the user types in a string instead, there isn't really much that Scanf does at all to help us with that. So again, Scanf has some quirks. So as much as it's a good basic function to use to accept input, you, you very often don't see it used in working programs. And there are other techniques that we can use that I'll cover in other videos. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.